Einer. Einer, can you hear me? Hey, Barry. Hello. Is my audio low or is it coming through okay? It's, it sounds perfectly nominal, like right at perfect. Okay, thank you. I'm not able to uh, get Heiner's sound yet. Oh, Heiner's Heiner. here. Okay, Heiner had to go shopping, but he's here anyway. Heiner is in his though. orange suit. And he's, he's sideways. Always. <laughs> sideways. Did you get your no. shopping done? Computer, <laughs> it's cancel. My jumper. It's my jumper suit. And it's always blueberry. Have always you what? Got a... Always it's what? Always blueberry. Haven't you got a home? You always seem to be in the same space with me in cyberspace. <laughs> I'm in my computer study. My upstairs, there's a small upstairs bedroom, which is where I have all my computers and it's just a, you know, it's but I, I, one, two, three, three of them in use and one more not turned on right now. No, two, four turned on and one more not turned on. <laughs> yes, we have the same environment. I'm presently writing you a system about a letter or email about an oilogy for Josef. Yes, I just saw that. What? Uh, no, I'm I'm writing another one, and oh, you were no. your eight models or whatever you were just sending. But are we in a session? Where are we? We're in the Saturday barnstorming, barn raising. I'm sorry, barn raising with Sam just, Hahn, the GCC. Just the three of us. So Hunter. far, but it's just. I mean, it's only exactly at the top of the hour right now. Hunter, would you like to rotate your device? Because right now you appear sideways. No, I think you you should train your mental <laughs> Okay, then let's do it this way then. <laughs> All right. I did the same thing with Barry yesterday. <laughs> okay. All right. So I know that you had fairly strong opinion about a topic today, Einer. Well, I was um, late in the last night saying, we have to really look into our intrinsic uh, general motivations. What are we doing here? Who is here as an observer or as a stakeholder with which intention? And are we building a barn or are we building a house or the planet? So I think there's a lot of confusion. And out of that, when people are not aware of being silent and listening and always interrupt and didn't learn in kindergarten civility or civic conversations, then you have this cacophony. And I'm not ready for that. And that's why I feel, and that was communicated to me, many, uh, especially women, left our boys group. Heiner, how old are your kids? About 40. Do you remember when they were like four, five, six, seven, eight years old? Yes, it's the same like with my grandchildren. Do you remember saying something like, you can either learn from me or you can learn it on your own? <laughs> like, don't touch the hot stove. <laughs> don't eat that, you know, flour. Do you remember those, those lessons? Hey, you want to do kindergarten? <laughs> we have not yet reached kindergarten, Heiner. We're pre-K still. <laughs> because most of us haven't signed up yet. 
Well, I know, Sam, that's why we met with Gertrude, that I like your deep approach to find kindred spirits, people you can trust, you can work with. And that's a very national, natural approach. But how we do it in modern cyber culture, uh, cyber war times. So, so um, finding, yeah. let me just continue. So I'm slow and I very often have to catch and find words. So what I want to end with is just trying to do kindergarten in telling uh, this how you listen and where you learn and where you learn to speak and when you, where you learn to really speak up and do something that uh, the issue of just learning like with first internet we had this uh, game wars everybody was writing an email to everybody and you had wars all over in companies and administration you still have it here that we are still on the first grade in the first class in school where where we look into how to develop conversation and listening but my concern is i want in global challenges conversations to go into peacemaking getting together when we can't agree and going beyond the need to agree and now i'm finished okay so i think we're going to bypass uh check-ins then today since we've just jumped right into it unless anyone really wants to check in and i'll give you five seconds <laughs> I should have mentioned I'm, I'm seeing you upside down, Sam. <laughs> he knows that. That's because originally okay. Heiner was sideways, and until I turned myself upside down, Heiner stayed sideways. Okay. <laughs> no, he's queer. I think he's alien. <laughs> On the other side of the world. Yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could do the Oppenheimer thing with the four hands at all at making a square. <laughs> Although you notice that uh, there was an experiment performed on people who were given these prismatic glasses yeah. that turned everything upside down, right? And over time, they just completely adjusted. Exactly. And when they took anyway, them off, they had to readjust. Right. Okay, so we're onto this topic now that uh, Heiner sent a very long message about. In the meantime, though, do we want to collect other topics? I have specifically one new one I would just like to mention. But you guys can go first. It's possibly related to Heiner's. I'll just mention that we might possibly get some strangers coming in today. A friend of mine um, startled her cat, and the cat jumped and scratched her on the hand and bit her. And it looked like it was getting infected, so she went to the hospital. But she was on uh, on Facebook, and I said, if you have to wait until they decide for surgery, I gave her the coordinates of this session. And possibly others who are reading might join, but low probability, but they might. How did you motivate them? To join? Yes. I just said to my friend Jennifer, because uh, she says, first she says, I don't think I'm going to need surgery. And now she says, no, no maybe I'm going to have to. So she's going to be sitting in this hospital bed. And I said, uh, if you're sitting idle, waiting for them to decide whether you need surgery, you know, starting in 15 minutes, there's this uh, shooting the breeze session for two hours and maybe overtime and feel free to join us. You don't have to turn your camera on. You can just do audio. I just gave her something to do, possibly. She says, I think I'll read a light novel, but she still might come. So who knows? And maybe okay. other people who are reading the thread might come. So for the record, I would urge that we not characterize this talk as shooting the breeze. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, Thursdays are specifically for open topics. I would characterize Thursday more as shooting the breeze. Okay, that's fine. That's just my gentle request, okay? That's fine. I couldn't, I just needed a couple of <laughs> typing in real time. To, if okay. I said barn raising, I don't think it would have registered. It's... Yeah, so let me respond briefly to Heiner's thing because I know that the, it's hanging in the air. I don't think we're ready to build a barn yet. 
we've not been ready for three and a half years. However, that's why I changed the name of this thing probably a year ago, maybe uh, longer, to barn raising and foundation laying. Because what we've been mostly doing is trying to find the foundation. And we've not yet found the foundation. So I believe we're in the foundation part of it, not yet in the barn raising part of it. That's just one quick rejoinder to you. I'll just say that before you lay the foundation, you have to dig a pit to put the foundation in. And the pit is a modern English rendering of the Hebrew word that's, that stood for hell, literally the pits. The, the, the Old Testament word for hell was Sheol, which literally the pits. So we're, we've, we've been digging the pits <laughs> for three years. I, I even have a more fundamental question. You what see, is that? I, architects and planners, this, how big is your tent? How big is your umbrella? How big is your barn? Is the barn like planetary? And how do you approach it? Because it's planning, not knowing where to build the barn and into which direction, where is the orient, where is the mecca, is very futile. It's open. There's no constraints on the size of the barn. It's in the virtual internet space. It's in the cloud. Can I have a quick rejoinder to that one? Uh, we have finite time, so we probably won't cover very much of the infinite space. <laughs> so I don't think the, the space is infinite. It's the hell. If somebody was talking about the hell where the pit is. And right. the, pit is, the pit is where the foundation is going in. Well, the pit is the internet. <laughs> the internet is the pits. <laughs> how, about, how about a Venn diagram so we can focus and people can have a better idea where spitballing is serious and spitballing is just shooting the breeze? That's another part of the hell. That's another part of the confusion and the disruption that is in the hell of the pit, which is the internet. The unknown They were spitballing the breeze into the pit. Okay, so I think we're still just informally gathering, so I'm gonna toss something out there, okay? Heiner, I don't think we're here to actually build a big barn. I don't think we're in agreement with how big the barn is. That's why actually prior to coming to GCC, when I was talking about you know concepts that I relate to something called COI, the community of impact, you know, the personal practices, I refer to it more as genetic design. I would prefer to see a design set of micro genomes that we can infect everybody with. Like here's the listening genome. Here's the patience genome. Here's the compassion genome. Here's the doing good genome. Here's the finding friends genome. Here's the connect to, you know, amplified genome. You know, those are the kinds of things I would prefer to use as a metaphor. To me, the barn raising metaphor was just, hey, you know, people in the U.S. at least grew up with these storybook history lessons saying, oh, well, everybody that felt like they were a small village would get together and put up the new person's barn, you know? So that was just one way of trying to tap into that notion. But I actually think what we're trying to do, what I would prefer to do, is to micro-inject little messenger RNA into everyone regarding these microgenomes. I'm probably, you know, bastardizing this, this entire metaphor here, but I, I'm hoping you guys get what I'm trying to say, okay? Now, maybe, maybe once maybe. we have an infected population, okay, then that population, you know, doing good, connecting with each other, being accountable, blah, 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 might actually then be able to create a barn. But I think that getting together a random set of people and saying, let's build a barn, uh, that's not gonna be a very good barn and not everybody's gonna stick around. So okay, anyway, I, that's my quick rejoinder. I think you asked me, uh, the term genome is very dangerous in Corona times. <laughs> so we, we all have been here with Amanda. Now she is very much into seeing the problems of manipulation of the genome. And so watch your metaphors and watch words and do something concrete. That's why like frivol in kindergarten and alternative education, where you don't words and watch your metaphor and 
regarding politics. People are afraid when they hear that word. And that Your audio is very hard to understand. <laughs> it's it's not coming through very smoothly, Heiner. Especially okay. when you knock your device or when you pound the table or whatever. Okay, uh, people are really allergic when you say something like a network or a Gantt diagram or an image. We humans are different. I studied it intensively with Japanese or with Arabs. They cannot orient in maps. And other engineers like vector graphics and others shy away if it's not music and if there is no resonance. So we have to really watch out what you say. And I think your genome is another dangerous uh, hype of using a modern word. So let me gently disagree with you. <laughs> no, do it hard. Okay. <laughs> Then I'm going to say, let me brusquely disagree with you, okay? When the person speaking is genuinely trying to communicate as well as intention, is it really the person's responsibility to be aware of how all others might be triggered? Or perhaps that's a secondary issue and that being the primary focus might detract from the primary communication. I'm not sure, but I do think that immediately picking up on things like, oh, don't use that word because it's not politically correct, or don't use that word because you know that refers to collaboration with the Nazis, or don't use that word because it's uh, racist. That is a secondary issue, I believe. As long as you can actually say, okay, there's something in the message, but let's refine it in this case, I'm perfectly okay with that. But to immediately come back and say, well, I don't like the metaphor because it uses these words that's going to piss off Amanda, that to me is not really trying to lean in. It's actually leaning out, in my opinion. That's why we need rule omega. That's why we need rule omega. Was so that? was that gentle enough or was that too brusque of disagreement? There's too many words in the genome, especially the word concrete. What was the word Glenn used? I didn't get it. Uh, rule Omega. If, if we if we practice Rule Omega, Rule of, Oh Rule Omega. Okay. In a space like this, then the space opens up. Suddenly, we can speak more freely. What is the, what is, what is Rule? Of, does Rule Omega have an actual um, definition? It's that, it's that you always presume that there's some truth or something interesting in what's being put forth. And that's rule the, it's the, the only rule, maybe the only rule you need in a space yeah. like this. We concentrate on meaning, meaning, and let the words have less less significance. If we concentrate on the meaning behind the words, I think it's a little bit like what Sam uh, just described. Yeah. So you need a few forward. words. You need a few words strung together, and then you can decipher the meaning a lot more easily than if you just fixate on one word. It's bad bad practice. I've heard it used in different contexts, so uh, I might be channeling uh, Colin badly, but you know, there's also another sense which I've heard it being used, and by the way, I don't know this uh, term because I don't use it, this rule omega term, but Colin, would you like to either agree or refine Glenn's definition of rule omega since in here, at least, you're the one who introduced that term here for me? Actually, I think rule omega is something different. I just That's what want I thought. To, yeah, R rule omega is something where Glenn wants everything to be possible, to not have unnecessary criticism. Um, and I think within context of a conversation, that's fair. But just having lack of focus in everything possible is just like uh, painting with mud. Um, okay, okay, that, that I should define because that's not what rule I mean. zero is what I introduced. If you want to yeah, know about that's that, right. yeah, no, you, rule omega yeah. isn't that. It's rule omega is, is very simple. It's is when somebody says something, then as a listener, my attitude is that there's some truth in what they say, or there's something interesting in what they say, even if it's partial, incomplete, etc. 
Uh, so I, I look for that. So I, I, and, and that also means that maybe I ask questions, maybe I dig. So there is room for criticism within Rule Omega, very much so actually. But it, it's I, maybe not, yeah, go for can it. Can I paraphrase that a little bit? Please. I have been introduced to that concept, Glenn, but I have not heard it referred to as Will Omega. And the, and the question is this. In other words, if you see someone or hear someone saying something that's outlandish or impossible or out of left that, field, that the question is. I would ask uh, is, how would an otherwise intelligent and rational person come to think this way? In other words, if you assume that the other person is rational and intelligent and good-hearted, how might you contort your imagination or create a persona or a path of reasoning that says, how might that person have arrived at this particular statement? Now, I'm not really good at doing that sometimes. I try to do it, but I'm not really good at it sometimes, okay? But that's the way I've heard it posed. Is that consistent with what you just said, Glenn? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's definitely in that direction. And um, Collins mentioned steel manning before, uh, and that's also a little bit in the same direction. Uh, appreciation, generosity, other words that are used. Okay. But it, so, yeah, you're getting the main gist of it. Okay, so let's play amateur systems thinker now, okay? Let's draw three circles in Collins' favorite Venn diagram, okay? And label one circle rule zero, label another circle leaning into intelligent, rational, otherwise intelligent people, how can they say something like this? And then the third Venn diagram, whatever you think uh, is your definition. And let's see where there might be some overlap. And I'm not saying we do this in real time, but I'm just saying someone might want to create that artifact and we might want to just, you know, analyze it. Uh, because that to me would help disambiguate these terms. Because we all use these terms in different ways, you know? Even the word systems thinker. I'm not sure anyone here agrees with anyone else in what that term means. Systems thinker, systems thinking, okay? And oh, by the way, uh, I, Colin, uh, not to pick on you, I really didn't want to, but I was last week playing around with the idea of, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say it, sorry, it's, it's not good. Strike that. That was not very positive. Alex, you wanted to say something. Did I want to say something about the three circles in the Zen diagram? Sure. Welcome, Kayla. Welcome, David, by the way. There's a, an ability we all have to listen and accept the things we like that we hear and reject the things we hear that don't sound so attractive. And that way, we're absorbing what we prefer. And a lot of it's going over the top, you know what I mean? Or under the, under the table. So that way we're, we're all absorbing different parts of the conversation. And we'll, if we all wrote our own synopsis at the end, it would be interesting to read them. Over. Okay, so um, would anyone like to recap real quick where we've wandered? for Kayla and David, since uh, we've not really focused on a topic yet, but we've wandered on a number of different things. I hope we didn't record. We are recording. Okay. <laughs> um, would it help to uh, repost the, uh, the chat for the newcomers? Uh, if there's anything in there, I've not been following it very closely. Okay, well, I had put in bullet points for the parts of it that I could capture in a word or two, um, an, an item of, of, of conversation. And Heiner asked, uh, obviously, the question of what are we building? And um, by the way, uh, an idea came to me about that. We're, we're building a body of understanding maybe one way of putting it but glenn here's my uh here's my i got a little little of frustration into my voice now okay how are we building anything if we even don't share any shared memory and if everything is just in your mind or my mind or heiner's mind 
How are we building anything well, together? Maybe it's, maybe it's a kind of a building that isn't pre-designed in the mind of anyone, but it's more like an emergent building of an understanding over time that we don't right. know what's, will, what it will become. But how is that even happening if none of it exists other than in our own subjective uh, consciousness and it's not shared in any other way? Well, first of all, it's in the subjective consciousness that it does exist and it's being shared with everything we share, basically. Okay, I can accept that. that. Now, there's a little bit of ping pong, so it's part of my frustration here, okay? But if that's all it is, how are we doing anything any different than any other little coffee clutch? Well, I would say that if we do something different, then it is the quality of the attention, the quality of the sharing. The okay, so I'm going to push back on that also. That's actually granting us a lot of hubris. We think we're better. We think we're good. We think we're well-meaning. There's no other group like us talking like this. I think that's a bunch of bullshit. Maybe, I think there's a lot is. of groups. Maybe it is, yeah. But, but at the same time, what I was getting to is that if that is an area where we can contribute something of a high quality, let's put it that way, then we are building an understanding. Okay, somebody shut me up, okay? But I'm not gonna play moderator right now. How are we building anything? How are we sharing anything if we've got no artifacts to share? I can't take your mind and show it to somebody, right? I can't take Alex's mind and show it to anybody. That's not anything that we can actually share and anybody can get value out of. So how are we building anything? First of all, there's a lot of artifacts that have been made. And uh, take, for example, this question of agreements. Uh, I haven't shared this yet, but I wrote a, wrote a suggestion, which was based on everything we've gone through. And uh, that artifact can be shared. I can share it later. I've already written it. I don't know if I'm happy about it, but, but many artifacts have been shared, have been written. And they have been informed by things that have been shared and been thinking about here over a longer period of time. And that is more than nothing. And I'm not saying it's necessarily even good, but it could be good depending on the quality of, you know, uh, however we show up, what we share, what we receive. There's, there's, a, there's an exchange of energy. There's an exchange of ideas and if that exchange is high quality, I'm saying if, I'm not making a claim, but if it is of a relatively high quality, uh, then I certainly believe we are building a, an understanding. But it, it's not a classical form of building, uh, I can say that, but there, there certainly is an understanding that's being formed and certain skills that are being formed, etc. cetera. W uh. Would you agree on that, uh, Sam? Uh, I will speak, but I know I've spoken a lot already. So let me let uh, David uh, jump in. I think um, we're talking about the artifacts, which are extremely important. It's nice to see where, where things have come from. And it's nice to see the thought processes that have brought this together. Um, but it's a bit like writing the Bible down when, when you know, Christ or whoever gave a, a living testimony of, of live life don't try to tie it down live it now and then the romans took it and statized it and put it in a in a book if if everybody that comes onto the earth that decides to do something works together and creates it in the real time um starts with small baby steps then it, it forms and functions and moves is living and you can you can then um you know document it from that point forward as it's grown um it's better to have it purposeful real and real time and you know evolving or free evolving uh from a point and then document i mean it's great to document as well it can go in any way but it's great to have a, a project what would be uh, a starting project what would be a simple starting project that everybody could say well that really interests me i could i could do this uh could we try and look at something that would see um, in permaculture, you start with water. You always have three times the water that you need per year. The next thing is improve the soil. The next thing is start to grow things. 
and you know you, 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 you've got a sequenced system of growth from that what is our water is it a, a, a currency that can't be touched by conglomerates or, or bigger organizations that frees us to, to invest in uh, eco villages in poorer nations or you know similar to, to, to Dave Tech Smith or similar to Michael um, with his, with his print uh, net. Uh, how can we integrate things like that into this? You see, we have to start with the poorest nations who have been raped by water companies going in, giving them beautiful clean water and wells, then monopolising it and selling it back to them. So all of these, um, all of these not-for-profit organisations go in there and use that as a, a, an inroad, and then turn it into a commodity. So we have to do something different, completely bottom up for, for a change, and give the responsibility and give some of the. Um, the, the the onus and the responsibility to individuals but we also need people on the ground that can can help that stay in that vein uh to take it away from the three-dimensional greed where where somebody in the village wants to own it and hold it and and, and, and make everybody else bow so what would be a starting point is a currency is a flow of energy uh the most important thing because then you can choose whatever you want is that our water is that our is that our is that our liquid gold? Is that the, the start of the life that we are creating here? Because as co-creators, we are creating life, beauty, truth, light, joy. Are we doing that by just documenting what we're doing? Artifacts are things that have died. We need something living to have artifacts of. And if it's fluid and flowful and energetic, uh, it's going to be hard to tie down, which is good. We, we need that as well. So nobody can actually... See, the thing is, if it's a flowing river, you can't like, grab a hold of it and stop it. Uh, Bill Gates can't grab it. The, the, the American government, the British government, the, the, you know, the, all of the, the usual suspects can't get a hold of it. If we're all holding a little bit of that flow uh, and we're going into to different tributaries and streams, you've created a chimeric energetic field or function that is grown across the planet that is healing the damage that our, our selfishness has done in the first place. So what is our water? What is our first step? What would be something that everybody can get on board with and go, yes, that will give us the, 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 the space to start something that we can all involve ourselves in. We can put our dreams, our, 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 you've got to be happy with it. You've got to enjoy doing it. If you don't, don't do it. I've walked out of about 50 jobs because I, I, I've loved them to an extent and then thought, oh, I don't like this anymore. And every time I've gotten something better. So we have to get to that stage. I finish everything I start and then move on to the next thing. So I leave on good terms and I've gone back and enjoyed it more when I've gone back. So what is, what is a job that we can all start right here, right now, present time and enjoy? What is our water? That's just, just throwing that in, sorry, but then I'm complete. I know there are a number of people who haven't spoken yet, so please uh, do indicate so. Otherwise, I'm likely to monopolize. Alex? Yeah, the water, the water issue was important a few years ago. <clears throat> but they're bringing out now modern, modern machines, solar-powered desalination machines, which is a bit like Elon Musk Skylink, because it's going to provide the whole population of the planet with clean, drinkable water, just as the Skylink is going to supply the whole planet with wireless Wi-Fi internet access, <clears throat> you know, via modem, via satellite link. That means water is not going to be a problem in the future. So I have a problem with that, Alex. And let me see if I can be sensible with my problem. My problem is David was suggesting a metaphor for how we think about what we're doing here. I don't think he was specifically talking about water for everyone. I think that is a clearly an important question. But as a metaphor, I would like to follow up on the metaphor, but you're, I think, responding to the actual material concrete specificity of what David was talking about. So if we went down that road, they would actually not acknowledge the metaphor that I think David was trying to introduce. That's the problem I have with that. Am I off the rocker here? Well, the word trying is important there. 
what word? He was trying to introduce a metaphor. Trying, trying. <clears throat> well, okay, he did introduce a metaphor and it's not gonna work if we actually don't lean into it. That's what I'm trying to say. I like the question in the end, uh, is there something we can do now? Well, can we, we use something else? Doing? Instead of water, can we use something else to put in there, like maybe flocculation? See, now I feel that we're going all over the place. <laughs> we're at four different uh, directions now, at least. Look, the, the, the question was simple. Is there something we can do now, which we would love doing, we, which would be our water? So to say that, that would go into the water metaphor which we can build on. Okay, I'm gonna make a meta request. I'm going to request that someone step forward and moderate this session so that I can just be a regular participant. Would anyone like to, to moderate? I would, I, would have, I would have liked to have had notice. I can try, but I probably, I can't do it right now. I'm not ready, I'm sorry. Is, is the speaker happy with the answer they go? Is the person who offered the metaphor happy with the result? Well, if David could restate his metaphor for Alex, and I know Barry also has difficulty listening in real time, so he probably might need to review this two or three times to get what we're talking about. Talking unless about we learn, currency. unless we learn, no, unless we learn how to adapt to Barry's um, uh, listening needs, and also Alex may have uh, difficulty with his memory. I, I think so. We have to be aware of that. Uh, and maybe abstract thinking is a problem as well. Um, I hear only oh. well, I hear only a certain amount of people can actually get abstract thinking. So I don't know what the numbers are, but I'm the more I look into what's not why people don't understand, the more it gets interesting for me. And in searching for the truth, it's messy. Um, and searching for understanding is even messier. Okay, so I'm going to answer as a participant. I know two other hands are up, but David, I don't think we're going to be able to define a project if we can't even two steps backward maintain focus in a conversation. And what I, that's what I'm seeing. If we can't focus, then we can't actually elaborate something that turns into a project. You know, when you said something, three or four other people went in three or four different directions with it. And either that's a failure of my job as moderator or we're allowing too much of this free flow going on, which is, by the way, why we don't seem to attain focus. And yet, if we were actually going to ask a moderator to help with focus, that's gonna require some more consent from the people in this room. Consent that I'm not assuming exists. Okay? Oh, wait, whoa, 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 why do, why do you assume that? We have done that before, several times, and we achieved focus. So what you said was blatantly wrong, Sam. How we is have, it wrong? We have done that several times before. And you did a poll at the end. Did we achieve focus? 100% yeah. answered yes. So I'm just saying here, in this session, in this I session. Know, yeah, in this session, we free flowing. That's right. Yes. Flowing like water. Flowing like water, yeah. <laughs> okay, I know that Alex, David, and Barry all have their fingers up. So can you guys okay, well, choose among yourselves? Yeah. There is a problem in the... I guess not. In the wider community, there's a wider, a wider community that we originally came here to focus on because it was a global idea. It was a global effort to bring together a group of yes. people to, to address a global problem. And we called it the global challenge. And water is a global challenge because the big corporations are taking over the supply of fresh, clean water. I mean, that was an issue for Nasway. They got in trouble for it in several countries, this legislation, because people were demanding free water. But if we can use it as a metaphor. If David yeah. wants to if David wants to expand on that, I'd like to hear more about it. Okay, I'm gonna go into listen mode right now. Okay. So when uh, Sorry, go ahead if you want, David. I don't, I'll, I'll wait. No, no, no. Go first, please. please. So when, when somebody uses the word water, as Alex said, you could be talking literally about, is there enough fresh water? Are we going to have enough fresh water for 8 billion people on the planet? It could just literally H2O. But water is also a very common metaphor <clears throat> for culture. Like water is the culture that fish live in. And that's a common analogy. So if you think that the culture of a fish is the sea or water, 
what do we call the culture we live in? And we don't really, we just simply call it the culture we live in, but fluid. Th the notion is it's like water is to a fish as culture is to our environment. So I thought maybe we were talking about water as the metaphor for the culture that we live in. It's the medium. I think it was one step more than that. It was actually who has the rights over the flowing water. And if we realize what water is, it's a metaphor as in Sam's uh, thinking that, you know, if we all take sovereignty over a little piece of the water, then other people can't take it from us. I didn't get the analogy hundred percent, but I did get the idea that the water is free. So how does somebody own it? Yeah, you can't destroy water. It goes up and comes down. But it you wasn't about, you know, and it's about community as well. But it's, it, it could have actually been about water because he was talking about a project. But that's where I come in. I'm sorry, yeah. Rob. Let's let David uh, Middlemas. Uh, yeah, let's clear that up first before I talk yeah. about Venn diagrams again. First of all, I'd like to just apologize. I've, I've been sick for nearly five weeks now with a cough and um, I'm, 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 I'm extremely worse for wear. I'm going to have to go to hospital tomorrow. I didn't think I would be there tonight, but I've sort of managed to pull, pull myself around to this. Uh, with a searing headache as well. But I would like to try and moderate and I would like to try and sort of uh, involve in this. <clears throat> and basically, pretty much everything that is important to us um, is, our sovereignty is basically a gold coin that someone else owns. So we need to move beyond sovereignty to a point of stewardship. And the, the, the planet has been de-stewarded. Now, permaculture is simply a permanent culture. So that's a beautiful link that you guys have used. So first of all, I would like you to, to be soft and gentle on me because I'm not well. Um, and second, I would like to set a goal or to set a, an intention. If we want to change this world to a world that is better, we have to call it something. And it's best not to be a, a religiously um, authorized name like Nirvana or uh, heaven or whatever else. So why don't we call our our goal for GCC New Earth just for today? And just I'm asking you to hold this loosely. I'm not asking you to look into it deeply. I'm asking you to hold this as a commonality that we can look toward and say that this is our worldview. We wish to create a better world, and we've named it, and it, we have a focal point. It's a horizon. When we reach there, we'll then move on to the next one. It will become better and better throughout all space and time ad infinitum but for a start we need to move to a state beyond sovereignty beyond the monetary system beyond being branded by nike and this and that and the other and beyond the um you know the young whips in advertising as soon as you start looking at, 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 at uh, natural healing to come out with a million healing products and if you find reishi mushroom as the best they're limited and draw it down so they can still sell pharmaceutical drugs and control the system now we can call this uh, we can call this um, oh Craigie, sorry, you'll have to you'll have to forgive me. You can, you, 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 you can call this conspiracy theory, but also you can say that it's gross negligence that links. So if you think it's conspiracy theory, that's fine. But if you think it's gross negligence that links, you can link any, everything that has been classed as ecocide and genocide to the monetary system, to the Carnegie's, the Rockefellers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, throughout all space and time, pretty much. And wherever the money is pooled, that's the greatest amount of destruction, the greatest amount of slavery. And that's just, a, 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 we, don't, we, we don't have to discuss this, but we can say that everything in the world is not right. So our new ideal or idle could be simply new earth our water at this moment in time as we transition beyond this would have to be something like technology so that we take back the sovereignty first and then the beyond sovereign aspect of it it's going to be a process so it's not we're not going to jump up in the air and land on heaven on earth or whatever you want to call it it's going to be a process so we have to start with baby steps if you decide to go out of the the house to the shops and it's cold, the first thing you do is brush your teeth, get cleaned up, sort yourself out, put something warm on. So we're just brushing our teeth at the moment. Okay. May so I interrupt, David, ahead. for a sec? Yeah. In, in this process, on a scale of 1 to 22, how close do you think we are? Honestly, I think about 11. I, I think you, you, you're just on the edge of, of sort of moving over the pinnacle point. And, and you have been for a long time. 
when I first came in, I would say probably about five or six. Uh, and now I would say you, you're sort of 10. You're sort of, you, you, you're just sort of pushing over the, the point of no return. I've seen like sort of huge, because I'm dipping in and out uh, and I'm, I'm working um, in my own vein in real time uh, on the call front, as, as Doug put it. And I'm seeing you guys are, are sort of practically at the call face with picks ready. And this is a beautiful thing to see. You're just about there. Um, and, 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 and I think just a common worldview, a commonality. And then, you see, if we've got something really, really precious that we don't cling to, to, you know, if, 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 if we use non-attachment to an extent and we're a bit more flawful with it, we move, we flow. As soon as somebody puts a spanner in the works and throws in a, 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 a well, I don't think this is, it, it stops everything. So we need to remain flawful through it with our uh, grudges, with our, our, our um, energetic uh, differences, because at the end of the day, that's what makes this unique uh, group beautiful. You see, if you only had dandelions in the garden, it would be a terrible garden. If you had dandelions, roses, natural flowers, wild flowers, it's a nice garden. So as soon as one starts to dominate, it's, it's, it's not that good. Heine, sorry. Yes, I would just would like to say bye-bye. I said I only want to come half an hour, but now it's already 45 minutes. I really liked the beginning of our meeting, the first 10 minutes where we were freely floating in flow, as Jimmy High said, to really reflecting on how we communicate, what we build, which metaphors. But then we got again, which is always happening in English, that you go into metaphors, into analogies, and really get reductionistic and stuck. So maybe again, another section, just a free flow because it is not just a barn, it's also a sandbox. So over and bye for now. Pleasure to see you. Heiner, before you go, oh, too late. <laughs> I just wanted him to state his goals and intentions again, because I think I heard him recently say that what he's looking to do is to revive the original feeling he had in this group and expand to have um, many, many, many people participate. Um, so I think Heiner's looking to scale out the consciousness of what he's trying to do. And what I'm trying to do is find out how you can have a simple cranial map to get people to focus on a little bit of consciousness. Like before you're conscious of what you're talking about and you want to talk about it, then, then you have time to discuss it. If you're not conscious of what you're talking about and people are just feeding you sandwiches that you don't consent to, then you're not going anywhere. And I would just like to add the Venn diagram again. I think people would be surprised to see why other people are actually here um, if they don't already know. And it, I kind of scratch my head and look at the difference between the GCC I, the GCC we, and potentially this third inner area GCCU, which is where the I is of service for you. But I'm just playing with these ideas. Um, and I think we all jump back and forth between these different contexts. But some people I think have got some GCC Kool-Aid going on and they think we're all here to build something and we're on a boat and we can steer it. Uh, that analogy is not true enough for me yet, um, but it is a nice meeting space where we can work on the eye and get alignment from other people who share that same vision and learn how to coexist with people who don't. Uh, I think that's all important. And all the positivity I have, all the positivity that I have is usually superseded by the negativity before you can get ready and get started for some reason. So, um, and, and maybe we feel that in society too, in order for we can do good, is that your phone negative things off? to deal with and it's very difficult to um, find discernment when people are so attached to things so I think focusing on the eye is what I see very important um, so that we can have a we um, in other parts of the 
of, of the GCC, it's kind of, I think, uh, for good or for bad, is turned into um, possibly aligned, but I also see the messages are a little bit misaligned, almost like you're getting advice from a mother and a father and they disagree. <laughs> so um, I think finding your true path is what we're here for. Um, and, and asking mom and dad, you know, what do they mean by why they're here and what they see in me and what I could be from what I'm doing, get the feedback. And I don't want a parent-child relationship, but uh, I think a better way to characterize it would be um, taking responsibility to listen to peers, uh, whether you agree with them or not, like Glenn said, but also focusing your time because it's important. And some people are just here for entertainment and I'm, I'm not, although I do appreciate the camaraderie. Uh, so um, I, I do, I do appreciate the jokes and the things, but it kind of, it kind of makes me wonder if it's not a waste of time, if that's what the highlight is. And that's kind of why I call it a show. So anyway, I find the difficulties I get are people being showmen as opposed to leaning into ideas where they got their own battles. Anyway, I'm done. Thank you. Don't mean to be negative, but it's a bit negative. So can I riff on that one? I do think that there is, in, in my understanding, a tension between this everybody is heard meme and let's do something, okay? There's, there's definitely a tension there because so long as we're in listen to everybody mode, then I think we're actually gonna need to take a lot of time to do that because People speak and they speak for minutes at a time and you know, there's 8 billion of us, so that's gonna take a while. Whereas, if we are actually trying to create something, then we can take the ideas, the plans, the models, the suggestions, the whatever, okay? And take what people are saying and say, has that been said before? Computer, cancel. And if it's new, let's add that in some positive way to what we're creating. And if it's not, then excellent. You've had your say, somebody's, you know, going to be able to listen to you. But, you know, this thing that we're creating needs new ideas. Otherwise, it's just going to be as it is, right? So if we're creating something, we need new ideas. We need new construction methods. We need new ways of looking at the model itself. We need new ways to refine the certain aspects of the model or the plan, or the decision, or the charter, whatever you want to call it. So to me, I've always had this tension that you can't listen to everybody first before you start creating something. Otherwise, you're going to be in listening mode forever. That's the tension I've got. And so long as we're in listen first you know, to everyone mode, People that bounce in are going to say, hey, you've been going at this for three and a half years. What have you got? And we're going to say, oh, we're still listening. I mean, that's okay, but, you know, that's not all we're here for is my remembrance. Over. I think that it's very important to tune in to where we are right here and right now each time ourselves personally take a couple of deep breaths and be more mindful and observe more than react because the reactions are the eddies in this flowful stream that keep drawing us in to small scale uh, niggles and negligences and uh, sometimes either too gross or too fine a point so if we have a flow and we have a, a, a so you know if the if the if the space that we're, we're flowing to is the, the ocean as a drop in a in a, a stream we need to enter the stream first we need to be stream enterers uh, and and it's terrifying because we're a drop we think that the, that the stream's going to engulf us ego gives that ideal uh, and then the stream is terrified of the ocean because the ocean's vast but it's all water we're all water which is back to the analogy so if you look at the Elon Musks of the world and all of the people that uh, are, are doing great or not so great things whichever way you want to look at it 
what is their main uh, their, their main water at this moment? It's at, at the mon- moment it's the monetary system. So if we can find some kind of funding and we can move to some other kind of ecological funding or something else that can give us some flow in the real time, we can move forward with a project. Maybe it would be a stove like Dave Tech Smith. Maybe it would be PrintNet. Maybe it would be something like that to start with. But we could have people develop and we could be developing the ideas and actually put them into practice. Because I can say, like, this is a great idea. Why don't we do this and, and, and get you know everybody in the room to say, yes, that's a great idea. Let's do it. And then, oh, we've got no money. We've got no way of doing this. We, we've, we've got the, 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 the mental capacity. We've got the heart. We've got everything we need. What's it working towards? What is the world view? And how do we keep a focal point when we get to this sort of uh, disruptive or stagnation of flow caught in the eddies? How do we pull it back around? We need somebody just to mediate gently and remind everybody that we have a purpose. Uh, so if we can, if we can create a, a gentle, non-attached focal point to create that flow, it could be a, 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 my idea, the, the idea that I, I think is, is some kind of funding, uh, i.e. eco-currency or Bitcoin or something that's independent and, and, and flowful, and that we're not going to put a great deal of, of money into, but we put more effort into working through it, uh, and investing in maybe four or five, maybe, you know, something like $100 in total. Everybody put a dollar each in or $2 each or something ridiculous like that and just see where it goes. And then if that's what we've got, have, you know, we, we make 300 or $400, have a three or $400 project to start with. Invest in some small... Has anybody read The Richest Man in Babylon? The book. I would recommend the book. I can't remember the author, but The Richest Man in Babylon uh, is a beautiful book, um, which basically shows the principle of, of, of utilizing money uh, to increase the biodiversity and the um, community spirit um, in Babylon. Um, and, you know, some of the knowledge was, you know, if you wish to buy gems, don't invest in a butcher going to buy gems. Invest in a gem salesman that goes to buy gems and invest in good projects to bring water, to bring food, to bring uh, things that will create sovereignty or beyond sovereignty. So these are, these are things we can look at. We don't have to hold on to anything. Everything is just literally flow. We take what we would like and leave what we don't like. You don't have to react to it. You can just literally observe. Nobody has died just from observing, unless somebody drowned in and you just observe when you can jump in and save them. But nobody that observes a, a, a group chat and goes through it without saying a single word has died, I don't think, because of it. And I, I know people can pull instances out and it triggers and people will go, yes, but they have. This is the idea, you see. We have to hold lightly and look at this in a, in a, in a gentle way. We could all find fault with that and we could all stop this conversation for another 10 minutes in actually pulling up and have won because I know that this has happened before. It's not about winning as individuals. It's about winning for those that can't win themselves. This is what we're here for, I believe, on earth, not, not, not in GCC uh, solely, but to help those that do not have the ability to find sovereignty or medicine or food, or love, or compassion, <clears throat> that live in intolerable conditions, sweatshops, etc., etc., and look at the problems and not demonise anything or anybody. Not a drop spilled, not a speck of dust lost. Everybody makes it all the paradise. So, with that, over. Sam, you had your hand. I can't see most people. Sam, yeah, yeah. I can't see any hands up or, or anything. So, uh, maybe I'm not the right person to mediate, but um, I could have an input at least if that would be okay. If somebody else could sort of um, inform when there's a hand up or something. Sam yeah. had his hand up. Yeah, yeah. Sam had his hand up. Anybody else? Because I know I've spoken a lot already today. I like. You can flip Sam. back and forth through the screen, David. Like it's very easy just to scroll left and right. And right. Just- yeah. You can do that. Uh, I just did that. I just did that, and I looked to see if anybody else had their hand up. Hello, 
Barry beat me to it. And so it's kind of open moderation, which is uh, a healthy sign if we can do it. I was about to just say, David, uh, just a real quick, since probably the first or second month of GCC, this is like late 2017, some of us, probably about a dozen to a dozen and a half of us, have been putting in like three, four, five euros a month into a GCC fund. So there's, last time I checked, which is probably over a year ago, I don't administer this, by the way, I think uh, Daniel Harris does. There are probably something like 800 euros or something in there, okay? I could be wrong. Some of it goes to service fees and uh, so anyway, the problem I think is without focus, without agreement, the funds just sit there and we don't actually end up doing anything with it. So that's why I've been so focused on focus and agreement, okay? And if there isn't any intent from others to achieve focus and agreement or to do anything with that 800 euros, then that's why certain people don't lean into focus and agreement. And that's why the funds still sit there not doing anything, okay? I think Aaron Perlmutter was the one who actually suggested, let's do this, let's get off the dime, quote unquote. And let's actually you know, do an action or a project. And there's actually a faction here within GCC that says, we're not here to do anything. We're here to be. I, think I, be nice. I quite frankly still don't understand that really, you know, because being human is to do human to me. Can I don't I think you actually that? be human without doing human. I think I have uh, something that relates to that. Because okay, I just wrote, wrote a little model here. I don't know if you see it. Um, open talk space. Yeah, so... So we have the open talk space and then around that we have bubbles and those bubbles can mean teams and projects. So if we have a few people who want to do something, they can do something. And if we have a few people who want to be or be present in the conversation space that is in itself doing something first of all and um, if that's all they do then I think they can be of great service and support to those who focus on a very specific project and uh, so, so that's a model we can use that but like, let's say we come back in five years. I hope to come back in five years. If I, I hope to be here for quite a while, quite a lot in this five. But let's say I walk away and come back in five years. I hope there's still gonna be a space <clears throat> where people sit around and question, what are we really doing here? If, if it's not a space like that in five years, I would have thought it would have been a failure. And if, if this thing, whatever it is, actually is a success, then I expect that in five years, in 10 years, there's still going to be a space where people sit and really don't know why we're here and we're trying to figure it out. And then around that space, you can have a lot of, a lot of very specific projects that can be done um, and then there's also some projects that might be very big so you know you, you may just want to spend a lot of time preparing it and uh, so like, like for me i have some very specific things i do want to do apart from just showing up but but it's also sort of very long-term things and um and for me, it's very useful in preparation for that, just to you know attend and share ideas and listen and discuss. And that is doing something in itself, but it's also possible to do more than that, obviously, and nothing prevents people from doing more than that. Yes, Sam. Okay, I'm actually like you. I view this as my commonly referenced uh, metaphor, a town square where people get together and say, hey, what'd you do? What'd you do? What have I done? Okay. However, 
How would you then, holding that frame of mind, respond to those who come here and say, oh, well, you guys aren't doing anything, or you guys are just having the same conversation over and over and over again, or even Heiner's post from 10 hours ago. How would you respond to that sort of input if you have that perspective? And thank you for saying that, over. Well, one way of responding is that well, maybe they got a point. I mean, if, if, if they say it's the same conversations over and over again, one response could be to uh, try to go in a new direction and do some interesting things. But why? If you already said, hey, we're doing what we said we were going to do, which is listen to people and everybody gets some time to give their, you know, perspective or values or projects. If we're already well, doing that and it's a value, then how do we respond to that quote unquote criticism? Well, we're already doing it. It's a value, but maybe it could be even more valuable if we if we dare to go deeper or, you know, explore further in, in a direction which is already very interesting for a few people here. And that could be done through that model that we've tried with, with focused sessions. One person prepares something, moderates something. And uh, I, I think that that, could be combined with just having a very free listening space. I think it's very well suited for, for a free listening space because e even if it is an open space, it's probably very good to have some structure, not a structure around the space, but structure put into the space as projects. I mean, this ties in with this idea of agile where you can have sprints, and you can have uh, perspectives, and um, so so if if we if we see this as a town square, but it could be a town square where we can also prepare things and have special sessions where we go into special subjects more deeply, and, and that would be an antidote to repeating oneself because it is very easy to just repeat oneself. So I think it's a legitimate concern. Yeah. You might have to unmute Sam. I just don't want to speak if other people want to speak. But my, yeah, David, did you want to? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> we always go back to town squares and lobbies and hotels and, and, and it's all very human centric. You know, if you look at, if you look at galaxies, they look like flowers. It looks like we're in a gigantic garden filled with life. And if we go to a, 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 a town square, it's manicured grass, uh, trees that are allowed to be there that the dogs can pee up against, fire hydrants, um, water that is, is is in pipes underground, etc., etc. So if we want to go back to a more nature-centric ideal, a more, a more, a more natural flow and state, we need to, to, to be human-centric in a, in, a, in a different way. We need to somehow uh, in, 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 integrate the natural world, which is creation of its own volition. And we've been denaturalized to an extent with chemicalized foods, factorization of all of the commodities, which aren't commodities. It's just nature flowing and, 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 and unwrapping itself across the universe. And we've one mote of dust in the corner of the universe, the Earth. There's a mote of dust that controls all of it or believes it does, and the rest of it still spiraling around in, 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 in beautiful vibrancy and harmony. Uh, no, the world... loss, of, loss of audio. So I think we should look at integrating all species for a more flowful, and, and, and free genesis is a great idea. To freely generate uh, paradise on Earth, we would have to look at all of the natural cycles that have been all the natural cycles that could be, and in the present tense, start to work towards something beautiful. 
Um, and if we see it as a garden, you know, as you say, Glenn, that would be beautiful because if you imagine their flowers, they bloom at different times depending on the conditions. So that would be great. So the, the, those that are just being, um, we need, and those that are working on each individual project and it coming to fruition gives the impetus for the others to go, wow, that <clears> is beautiful. I feel really good. I feel like I'm really part of something and that we're achieving something just being. And that all of these things link together to create a beautiful garden. So each one is a flower doing its thing. And they don't have to affect each other negatively or positively. They just have to be. And, and, and as a group, we can allow that by, by observing, by aiding where we can and not disrupting and not getting into those eddies, those, those, those whirlpools of, of, of whatever, where the energy sort of gets sucked in and stays. So it's just maintaining flow. So somebody kind and gentle needs to maintain flow. Somebody needs to say, well, this is not the focus of this conversation. Um, at, at Gaia Ashram, it was, it was Carla that, that, that maintained flow. We would start to talk about something and then we'd be talking about how we bought the, 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 the chips at the uh, freezer shop at such and such and whatever. And Carla would just say, right, guys, we're meant to be trying to, to, to create a, a meeting here to uh, set out the... Um, the, the 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 formulation of our, of our next weeks. Um, I kind of think straight, guys. I've had a f five weeks of flu, so or man man flu, I think. Uh, but ba basically, we're, tra we're trying to uh, create a timetable for Gaia, and then everybody would be sort of like flown off, in, and, and Carla would keep pace and say, "Right, this is not what we're here for. We, we need to know, you know, wh wh who's going to do lunchtime meditation." We need to know when we're going to work on the fields and what we're going to do on the fields. Who's going to run that? Is Tom going to, going, going to be forward with this? So we need somebody kind that's going to actually keep us on track and be quite stiff in keeping us on track in certain aspects. We're going to have a room where, where this is complete flow. We're going to have a room where we have a focal point and somebody to keep us on track. That's gentle and kind. Uh, and it's, it, it's necessary to start off with until we can maintain that flow ourselves, our selfless. Because when we are an I, uh, we are triggered. When we are an observer, we are not. And the flow starts. To, so you're sitting at the center of your own hurricane and you're not getting sucked into the, into the, the storm that's raging around. You're always in the eye of the hurricane. It's a good analogy. Um, so, Glenn, I think that, 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 that for me, I would say that that looks like a garden. For other people, it looks like a computer um, printed program for others it looks like uh, a town square and that is fine it doesn't detract from the the, the the beauty of it and we all have our human centric non-human centric multiply um, open idea of inclusion and all of that is fine because when it works in a flow everything and everyone is catered for that is an inclusive um, movement a flow and that's all it has to be you know each system will flow and each one is part of the garden, and it's fine. A rose doesn't have to be a dandelion. A dandelion doesn't have to be the soil, the earth, uh, and its microbiome. It doesn't have to be a tree. It doesn't have to be the garden. It doesn't have to be the bees or the beekeeper. It's still just the garden, and it's beautiful if it's allowed to do what it's meant to do. You see, if you think about our lives, we have dogs now that are kept on leads that have their reproductive organs cut out because we decide that it's not a good idea for the dogs to reproduce in the city and create lots of puppies and blah, 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 blah. This is atrocious. In Thailand, the dogs are free to roam. Uh, and if they were cared for when they got sick, they have free and happy lives. They interact with people when they need to. And then they go and play like kids in the playground continuously all day. And then they come back to be fed, they watch over the territory, they don't kill the chickens, they watch over everything, and they play in fun, in joy, constantly. And all it needs is a tiny little bit of management and a little bit of love. And, and if we can be a little bit like that with each other and let each other play, it doesn't detract. The roses don't detract from the soil health, from the lawn, from the, the, the um, town square, from the lobby of the hotel. And Sam, that's fantastic that we, 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 we have a, a, a pool. Um, and I don't feel that I, I have a, 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 an ability to, to, to uh, choose on any of these things, but I can put some ideas forward because I didn't pay into it. But I know that I'll 
be made felt quite included in the, the, the situation. I can put ideas forward, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and I can maybe put you know um, other things in other than money because I don't tend to touch it a great deal. Um, so we all have our parts to play. If we allow the judgment to fall away, if we allow the, the grains to fall away and just observe and look at the garden start to form and flourish, uh, let it all be. You know, being as important in every aspect. And we're here because of love, because you would have given up. We all would have given up after the first week if there was no love here. So it's proof that there is enough love to hold this group together and everybody that dips in and out. This is one of the most beautiful, uh, cohesive, and beautifully broken groups that I've, I've ever had the honour to be part of. And the brokenness is, is wonderful because, you know, the best mosaics are made from broken crockery. It was just a cup beforehand, and now it's a it's a it's a it's a mosaic of the universe or a galaxy. And you know we have to remember that everything's okay, everything's fine. So, yes, that, th 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 thank you. That really resonated with me. I should just also mention Feist had his hand up. Uh, I think he had something here. Yes, it's just. Uh... I can just have a personal project. So I picked up Jonas from Plinternet. So I'm discussing with him. So ecological restoration. He's doing planting trees. So I have ideas from the Netherlands. Sharing this with him. Looking at Google Earth, how the trees have gone and where they're still standing. So discussing. So what I'm doing here is just listening. Have the project say on hold, just listening ideas and listening to David and getting some uh, high high level ideas, meta levels. And some go deeper to go directly into water like uh, like Alex, but uh, I like the meta level. Yeah, the meta level is definitely something we have done a lot here. I think we, we're experts on on meta level here. Well, Thais, Thais mentioned something that is uh, very concrete, although he's in the meta at the same time. So he has one foot on the ground. And if he says that's what his project is, to me, that puts my antenna up to say, what in my skill set can I lend to Thais? Right? Um, and I think the same thing when David's talking about what he wants to do. The only we part of the GCC I see is the administrative and what we want to do to make it a, a more powerful media source um, for spreading information and alignment of intents and things, examples of ways to do things. But um, it's a little, so I see, I see, you know, and I think David's message is really good. I don't speak that way. I don't have that much faith in just letting go of everything and um, finding a place where I can turn the world into a sanctuary for me. I have to carve that out within the world that I've got. Um, so there's, I think there's a conscious message above it all which is the meta layer, what is your journey and, and how can you relate to different people? Um, and that's what I'm hoping that will happen here is I think, you know, Sam said it well, um, when people see us, they should think that we're off doing stuff and we're just at the town square for a while talking to each other, talking about our boat that sank and then different things, you know, and um, the new boat, you're gonna get to replace it. And, and why you got a boat and you know everybody knows that you're the fisherman or whatever and you know is it the sdgs is it for trees is it for your idea and what is the we it's just it's just very very um undefined which i think it should remain quite open because that's where idea space is but at the same time i think the individual ideas should do better at focusing on what they're premises and what they really want to put their time into as opposed to just putting their time into anything so if you know if I was to help David I'm listening I'm thinking 
okay, well, he's talking about these eco villages. He's talking about this new way to live. All we need, all the love, the things, the real things that we're missing by, you know, paving all the parking lots, um, you know, a very good example of a message. So how many people are there out there doing what David's doing, right? Um, was Michael Jewesifitz another version of that from New York doing that within, you know, um, Uganda? doing what he could do to do his best. So I think I think that's the, the goal is to figure out what it is the passion that the person has or the skills to facilitate other people's ideas. Like the person who designs the hammer isn't necessarily the guy building the houses. And and Sam saying, while we're waiting for the house builder to, you know, and the hammer guy to decide on the weights, everybody's coming in and talking about it that don't even know about houses or hammers. So, you know, how many experts are we actually consulting here? Like what, you know, Ty says, well, he went and looked at Google to see what's going on with the trees. Well, that was an effective question into the real world. So that's what I'm interested in. Not all this, why can't we understand each other and focus? And why are we, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's not a responsibility for you to know what I'm doing. And if I don't, if, if we're not aligning and I don't want any more of your criticism or help, I should be able to say that as well and say, you know what? Go find some other members to, to play with. Um, I've had enough. That's another experience I've had. That, like, uh, why, why is it my responsibility to uh, make other people understand if, uh, if it's not working? And, and a, I've had lots of people that I've talked to and found many new um, meta ideas. It's not, it's not such a concrete idea. When you have people asking you concrete questions for meta ideas, it's very annoying. Um, and uh, I hope we can put all that stuff behind us and really lean into the stuff that's aligning with the people. And if it's healthy and working, you'll know it because you'll be talking outside of this two hour period. Like you'll be actually putting time into it, working back and forth and it'll branch off and who knows, it may get as successful as a take over a whole Friday experiment. Now, you know, if I, if I want to resurrect Friday experiment, it's going to compete with, uh, I'd have to pick a new time because uh, Gertrude's appreciating Sprout um, morphed into that. So, you know, it's, there's all this dynamics going on with what's the we and what's the I and what are we trying to do, but ways to spread our message and help each other, I think is the idea. And um, I'm, I'm deciding, you know, how much time I want to put into these things because really what I'm saying is not rocket science. It's follow, follow the way with caution and care you know, and move on to different levels. When I started talking about this with Doug around, he said, oh, wait, wait, hierarchy levels. We can't have that. It's like, I, I meet so much needless roadblocks and just trying to explain an idea. Um, and so I, I've realized that this is not the place to explain that idea. This is the place to get feedback on how I've made something that you could look into. So how much time I want to put into developing that, like you too, Glenn, like I see two or three books, right? Um, you know, and what you're trying to do and, and your mentors and people that you're following who, who, who guide you. Like that's, I think that's what we, we need to share mentors, you know, people that are leading in the field and then standing back from the noise of the corruption and saying what possibilities have been missed. And maybe David's doing that somehow by, you know, standing back and finding the, and, and Josh going off grid saying, you know, how much can, you know, I disassociate from what I find is not healthy in my life and not everybody can do that. So, you know, people doing that can, can show examples um, where, you know, um, things can become more local and at the same time manage globally, you know, cause I do think it comes down to resources in the end, making sure everybody has the needs and resources and our skills are one of them. So why do we waste them? That's it. Thanks. A little comment on that. Uh, it, it seems to me that when looking at the present culture in general and society in general, with the economy and and all the the problems that also David alluded to with with the monetary systems. It seems that what's missing 
and many people have pointed this out, what's missing is some truly new thinking on a, on a big scale. So it's, it's a lot of brilliant minds who spend their energy on very small, even perhaps trivial problems. But, and there's many think tanks who, who represent certain interest group, which is already within a paradigm where they perform some kind of function, but it's, it's not the global point of view. Um, but, but I think it's more difficult to find some very serious think tanks that really have the global point of view and who, who try to imagine global futures as well as you know, practical paths to use the resources we already have in better new ways with a, with a more fitting paradigm. And um, for example, when we hear politicians on television speak about the economy, how often do we hear them say the word permaculture? I think this is a great example. I mean, from a, from a certain point of view, you could say that if you speak about the economy and you don't mention permaculture, that's almost like speaking about the ocean without mentioning water, because it's, it's obvious that the future of the economy has to be built on those kind of principles or, you know, cir circular economy is, a, is another example. Uh, a lot of the time politicians are talking about things that happened in the past. And they're even talking about mistakes that happened in the past, uh, etc. So that brings in the whole theme of the information ecology, which I think da Daniel Schmachtenberger has has a very good good series on the the game B people. I mean, he's he's basically addressing the problem of the information ecology in general the ID flow in general around the world and that in you know it's it's very polluted so conspiracy theories just pure craziness that's also a part of it entertainment is a part of it the the clickbait economy uh, and there's certainly economic interests into that as well that's pushing it so, so those are some of the things that pull our attention. And then the issue once again is, where are the people who are very seriously uh, sharing the best knowledge that exists and the best ideas that exist in order to imagine what are the best futures globally and, and what are the, you know, alternative designs for economies that work better, or to take even a different example, what about mental health? In my opinion, I think that the, the number one global challenge today is mental health. Uh, people are suffering psychologically enormously. Uh, from loneliness, from being stressed out, from being depressed, etc. And just having a meeting space like this, by the way, probably helps a little bit uh, for just our psychological well-being, especially if we make it this beautiful garden that, that was described. All right. but, but, it, but we could also, of course, make it into more than that in the sense that we could really begin to uh, build a kind of brain around these, these uh, gardens and these meeting places where there is serious thinking about the big picture questions. And, um, and you know, often Colin, we talked a little bit about science and I think 
we all here are probably big fans of science. If we if you think about the best science or science at its best, but here also, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that we don't have science at a very high level in the world today, because what is called scientific institutions is also part of this monetary system with ownership, with uh, disciplines, with various cultural um, habits of thinking. And some of those habits aren't even very clever. And um, so, so what, what would, for example, real science be? What, what would open science be? What would be a kind of science that could really work primarily towards the truth and understanding the truth in order to create the good and the beautiful and the useful uh, in, in all kinds of ways? So the technology then could become the arm of such a science, but that technology would not be within that profit, um, sometimes even parasitic action, but it would be a technology that really wants to increase the quality of life for people um, all around the world. And, and all of this, it seems that it's, it's these enormous areas that, that haven't even been touched by, by humanity. It, it hasn't been put serious resources into it to any large extent. And it's an enormous opportunity. Um, and uh, th these kind of communication spaces, uh, and uh, especially if we can build on them with artifacts that aren't stale, that can also evolve and where we, we, the, all the stuff we've been we've been on to, that is the, the the possibility that could really open up real science, real sense making, real co visioning on a big scale, um, as well as good news in the sense of lifting up the best projects from around the world instead of focusing on on scandals and all of that nonsense but to to lift up the good work that's already being done like for example what uh, david is doing and several others and uh, but but then also to take it further to really imagine how could we use the, these principles uh, on other scales how could uh, one over time create some kind of uh, network of, of this. Um, so yeah, so, so, so I guess the, the, the think tank aspect of it, the, that, that's one of the places I could see these conversation spaces. If they could really evolve, they, they could do some useful work in developing the thinking and developing the understanding of, of what's what resources exist and what possibilities exist and what actual futures are, are possible uh, on a global scale. And uh, I think that's a great place for Alex to uh, say what you're thinking. Yeah, I've been watching over the past 25 years or so, uh, nonprofit groups growing and contributing to their own success uh, with with the old fashioned old paradigm committees with this you know, committee with a, three people running the committee, a secretary, a treasurer and a chairman or chairwoman. And that system works wonderfully. Nonprofit organizations, use, well, for profit organizations use it too. But the insanity we see in the world is due in large part to people who continue to do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result each time. That's a definition in, a, in one sense, it's a simple definition of insanity. There are a lot, many others, but to, count, to counter that insanity, people have to have a program, a formula, a method, a model, 
the technique, and that is that involves the inner journey. The three the three aspects of it is mental, physical, and spiritual. That's the triangle that makes up the triad of the of the this the holy trinity. But the thing is, it's they have to be in combination and working with each other and balanced, so that you have some sanity returning to the faculties of your emotions and your spirituality and your mentality. That way you see an opportunity to work together in a group so that you can come up with a, what um, Heiner said was a concrete model, a concrete foundation. And then when you put your barn on that, you know you've got solid something solid below it. Over. I think if we look at if we look at ancient cultures, <clears throat> the, the the triad is a necessary aspect, but in ancient cultures there was representation of the grandfathers and grandmothers, the mothers and fathers, the sisters and brothers, and the daughters and sons, and in the centre of the circle where everyone sat was a fire, it was the warmth, was the heart, was the community, and we look across at every aspect of the community through that. We're sort of doing that here. We're sort of we, we, we have pretty much every aspect of this community because maybe we, we, we aren't children, but we have childish aspects. We have children around us um, who are you know future stewards of this earth. So we have a responsibility to try and create something worthy of hand because basically we're, we're loaning it from them and trashing it and allowing it to be trashed. Now, I don't know if trashing it and, uh, and, and you know specifically working on one second set point is as bad as actually letting it all be trashed and just sitting back because at the end of the day we do have an ability to respond to the things that are happening even on a minor scale and it's great sitting back and, and being um, but what of our future ancestors what of the, uh, the legacy that we're going to leave them Knowing that you know the trees that we plant a deer, we're ne never going to sit under the shade. We're never going to we're never going to get that. But you see, selflessness comes into this. So, to <coughs> sorry, <coughs> to have a world view of a paradise earth, it's not for us. It is because we can see it fulfilled in our own mind's eye, in our observations, and that gives us something that pulls us back, snaps us back. To the, the heart of our hurricane, to the to, to the to the the eye of God, or goodness, or whatever you want to call it. Um, community is the heart of the community, I believe, Barry. To commune, come unity, it has to come. And once it's here, it's here. So, to come to unity, unity consciousness is to, 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 to put the, the, the knives and <clears throat> the howling hurricane to one side and be aware that it's there, but observe it and don't get involved in it. And to be, to hold space for yourself to start with so that you become selfless. Because if you don't hold space for yourself and you throw yourself into every eddy that comes up and every uh, aspect of the hurricane, then you're just going to be buffeted and battered and then you're going to throw that at other people and draw them out of their centre. That's not acceptable behaviour. We have to help people stay in their centre, not, you know, wind them up or, or bring them into our own uh, version of uh, turmoil. We have to work on our own because if it triggers us, it's our issue and we need to work on it. We need to look inside. Um, brilliant, Barry. We need, we need honest, communicative technology we need things that will last and be upgraded, possibly. We need to maybe look at 3G and, and harness an old satellites, something like that, to start with, so that we can cl clear it, or looking at free source and open source systems, and maybe using old Macs, but hacking them, so that they can be they, they can be clean, something ridiculous like that, you know, or computers that cannot be spied upon, etc., etc., or CB radios. It could be anything. Or letter writing, and just delivering them as friends, so they're not controlled by anything. 
We just have to start to free things up, small aspects of things to be freed, to give them that level of sovereignty and then move beyond that sovereignty. Because it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to be free and have one precept of do only the good of all good. You see, if we do only good, that means that if you need to get to a party to, to drink wine and whiskey and someone has a car and you bang them on the back of the head because you need to get to the party, that's the good. It's great. It's your good. But the good of all good sort of does what it says on the tin. It gives you a little bit more of a, 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 a push in the right direction. And we sort of need to do that. Um, so we have to stop the self I ideal and start looking at the stewards of the future, of our future ancestors, which we borrow this beautiful garden from. And we also have to look at the trauma that has brought the 1% to power and how do we heal them and bring them back into the fold? Because this is free cycling. You know, everybody has to make it home. We cannot be hold and grudges. You know, Hitler has to be forgiven and this is a terrible thing to say and I apologise for that, but he has to be forgiven. And everything and everyone that has done anything wrong in life, we have to get to that level of compassion, of unconditional love, of meta. Meta is unconditional love as well. So this idea of meta is wonderful. It's unconditional love. It's a compassion. It's compassion. Complete passion. We need to get to a stage of, 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 of judgment falling away. We don't have to change anything. We just have to observe to, to, to everything that we think is real falls away to an extent, maybe. And give each other space. Hold space for ourselves, first of all, in the eye of the storm, and then hold space for each other in the eye of each other's storms, to know each other's backgrounds a little bit, to know why people are grumpy. I've had five weeks of cold and flu. I might be a little bit more grumpy than I usually am. You know, if somebody's lost someone, they might be a little bit more grumpy to, to hold space for that, to know that. A check-in every now and again is great, but you don't want to check-in all the time. You don't want to check-in every single meeting, you know. And, and I think it's gotten to the stage where Sam says, does anybody want to check in? And that gives us an idea of something major has happened and, and, and it's good. But it's also good to become present at the start of each each session to set that intention of, of, of where we're going, to give a, a, a future to those that we borrow that future from. But we can call it anything and it can be fluid. and It doesn't have to be, you know, it can be, you know, Nirvana, heaven, it can be new earth, it can be this, it can be that, it can be other, because at the end of the day, they're just cushions we're holding. They're just security blankets. It's all the same place. The universe, the omniverse is big enough for all of that to exist completely. The garden is, is big enough for the roses to not uh, destroy the, the, the marigolds. And there's a neural networks of, of, of fungal, the fungal networks beneath that connected all together. It all works beautifully together. We just have to let go of what we think and who we think we are to get to that stage of the garden in perfect harmony once again for our future generations and for the sake of our past generations, for our ancestors that have gotten us here. Wow. We have a responsibility. And it's time that we started to stand up and take it. Gently, kindly, and, 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 and from where we are to process and to not judge, to let it go and just hold space for where we are right here, right now, at this moment. Complete. That will, of course, change everything as well. I just wanted to mention Kayla had put her hand up, I think. Yes, I have my virtual hand up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that, David. Um, def your words definitely resonate with me. How wonderful would it be to just be able to forgive um, yourself, forgive others, and have complete compassion? And earlier when you guys were talking, I thought about um, two, two words. One of them you guys are familiar with, Talanoa, um, and then the other one is Ho'oponopono. And um, that's also Polynesian, but specifically Hawaiian, and it's about forgiveness. So um, again, as I was listening to you guys, just these pictures came into my mind of the past versus the present versus the future. And um, even though the COVID-19 sucks for me and my kids, I have faith that in the future, they're going to create a better world. You know, maybe not better as we see it is for utopia, but definitely better all around. When I was working um, as a human resources director for a mental health facility, there were a lot of 20 year olds 
um, underemployed. And what was really interesting when you were talking to them is that they saw how their parents suffered and worked too much. So it was almost like, well, we want to work smarter, not harder, you know? Um, and it was beautiful just to see that easy, seamless transition, you know, from the different generations trying to make things better. Um, and I feel like, you know, um, with this COVID-19 lockdown, since we've all um, mobilized, I think that's the right word, and can know that we can work and, um, you know, make some money from home, from the comfort of our home, you know, I think that speaks to what our children um, are capable of doing and or what they want, you know, to create that better society. Um, but to get over that, I feel like uh, compassion, forgiveness, I mean, we all have to own up to our mistakes, whether it's as small as, hey, you know, I might have interrupted you during a meeting um, or triggered someone and intentionally to as big as, yeah, you know, I participated in that war that wasn't really necessary. You know, um, how beautiful would it be for our, our global leaders to be able to do that? You know, if forgiveness, self-forgiveness and compassion were thrown into to the mix, I think this would accelerate, um, you know, that utopian society that most people are aiming towards. So anyhow, those are the thoughts that came up when you guys were talking. And I think I'm complete. Um, the, there's a model that I've been aware of for probably 20, 25 years that I haven't really thought about lately. <laughs> but maybe this is a time to bring it up. It's a five-step model for dealing with the experience of being on the receiving end of bullying. Step one, survive them. Step two, surpass them. Step three, understand them. Step four, forgive them. Step five, heal them. Yeah, no, I really like that. And uh, this, this whole forgiveness, I mean, if that could really become a part of the new paradigm, uh, it would make things so much easier. Uh, very important skill, I guess, or... Yeah, and bullies that, are the worst. Bullies are the worst, especially when they're controlling. But if we could avoid being bullied by the bullies, but, you know, survive it, surpass it, understand it, help heal it. I mean, that would be a much more active approach. Because often, well, that's you know, what I was thinking. But who are the who are the big bullies? Like you know, you got all the conspiracy theories, and you got all this really well-intentioned ideas. But again, I find that you go to set up your picnic, and then you know, some unexpected, or as Sam would say, you know, something happened with unintended consequences that you should have maybe been more skeptical of an ideal situation like what are the constraints i don't see a lot of that happening with the with the positive talk i i don't see from the mat of the one foot on the ground a lot of times um and that's why i said with tease i saw that if he was talking about something and he had something that you know we could get behind um you know each one of us has a project and we're sitting here philosophizing the think tank to a uh, uh, I, I don't know, I think an overworked over level, the, the highest meta I want to go to is the journey map and, and the game of discernment. So if I want to work with somebody, what do you mean by these terms? Or, if, you know, if we're going to be a group, we got to decide, you know, are we secular? Are we going to use people's beliefs in some way? Or how important is the Habarati, you know, these kinds of things like jazz, it was about the beginning of the universe. And that was so important to what we were doing. I don't 
I don't see why. And if it is, then why not make a side channel, right? Like we did, Glenn, about talking about yeah we should yeah. go into that uh we have well, a good thing started there yeah, yeah but the thing is i don't i don't think it's appropriate here i see it as a town square much like sam and if we want to create a movie theater with different movies that would be great but people are trying to show their movies out on the town square i don't know it's just a lot of misaligned things and well uh, what's when david, that if when david was talking earlier just told, or when Alex was talking earlier, I think it was pretty good. He was mentioning Heiner saying we need foundations. And I say foundations because I think Alex meant one foundation for the GCC barn raising. I see as many foundations or maybe multiple foundations out of each person. And those are different journey maps building that foundation, for example. But if we consider that, if we consider a town square or a garden, let's say, couldn't it well, be where do we beneficial? do the work? Is the work done here? I don't well, see that. Well, well, couldn't it be beneficial to, let's say, have one session here where we explore one topic that a person wants to bring out and then we have the side channel to continue it later? I think well, that I, I tabled be... after a, a discussion, the revisit that we've already had, maybe we could pick it up, find it in the archives and start re reinvigorate that conversation. Like, there's no For need example, to... we could take a discussion we've had before, if we have an artifact from it, if we've considered it deeply, then we could reinvigorate right. it, if it's important, exactly, if it's, if it's like a key discussion that... Yeah, and uh, like, for can... example, the, we, I think of you, Glenn, I think of the superstructure, and I think of um, unlimited possibilities. When I think of David, yeah. I, think, I think of, you know... He's over at the monastery, and if I need a little bit of uh, come on, let's get together and get her done. If I want to know something from history or some etymology or something, I might go check in with Barry. You know, if I, uh, the internet doesn't satisfy that for me, or you know, or if there's something that he said that I wanted to double check because he said a lot of things, right? So, you know, with Alex, he's doing a a peer to peer viral consciousness thing, right? Um, Sam's doing the circle you know the community of interest impact but i think it's switched more into uh, collective intelligence if i heard him correctly in the gem that i produced so it's it's pushing these messages forward with multiple foundations the we talk we all we kind of just washes over me like we're all going to i don't know let's let's not go there but you know it sounds very uh, how do you say um i, I don't want to say cultish but it just sounds ungrounded the the we that i don't know as opposed to the we that i do anyway because the world the world isn't that way and we're not that way uh certain groups and tribes could could be that way there's an aspect of change involved in the project that i've been promoting so that it's adaptable to changing times and changing situations and changing audiences You've got a group of young people growing up now on the fringes of the internet who don't read. They don't, they've given up reading. They just read what they find online. And most of that is images and pictures. When text comes on the screen, they'll read two or three lines and then click off. Over. Well, there, here's another pretty interesting thing. I mean, uh, what if let's say you have a room, many people, each of them have their own project, but all of the projects are of a specific kind, which are flexible by nature and which can contain many other projects. So you might have a, a group where all the different projects actually contain each other. And um, I think that's especially relevant for people like this who are exploring ideas with global potential that, you, you know, it's very easy, for example, for me to put my ideas into the framework of Alex's peer-to-peer uh, -peer vice goal model, or I could put it into Colin's maps, or I could put it into uh, Sam's community of impact model um, and, uh, and, and in the same way 
I could put all of the different models into my model. So we, we might have a species of models here that are is quite interesting. It, it's not the usual species of models. It's not a model that excludes other models. It's a certain kind species of, of models or should we say systems is probably a better word, but it's a, it's a species of systems that are multi-dimensional and dynamic by nature. So you can put all the systems into one another. And uh, I think that is often not appreciated enough uh, b because we, 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 we sometimes have this weird, this thing, oh, that's your system and you're talking about your system and they're talking about their system, but maybe they're not. Maybe everyone's talking about all the systems. Well, I was going to say, Glenn, I think your model is, a, you know, includes everybody's model because we talked a, a privately one time for an hour or so, and I, I enjoyed the conversation, but I remember that I kept bringing up, you know, constraints to, you know, where we are now. And like, maybe um, we all can't do the same thing. So when we're using the word all, we have to be careful. Um, and so you could say, but I know since you live in this country with this government system right now and this set of laws that you can only do a certain amount of things um, unless you have a way to leave that country. Um, or maybe I don't want to move to a monastery because I'm helping raise a family that I got to be in the vicinity of. Um, I could make my own monastery here, but it seems like I really need to be in the, the cash game. There's no way for me to get out of the, the value for service job game. And it is interesting to note that jobs were considered a dirty thing when they first started. But I, I think that there's so much complicated systems that we can't just say, let's unplug everything and expect there to be heart surgeons or viral medicines being made. It, it, we, I can't make a viral medicine. I can't make a transistor, right? There's, hun there's hundreds of thousands of people unplugging now and moving out of the cities, and moving into eco-villages where they live off grid and grow their own food. That, that's good, but we all can't do that. That's what I'm saying. Well, that's the thing, you see. That there's some of us who can, and they are. And some of us who right. won't, and we aren't. We are not doing it. There's right. So if we, if we chose, if we chose to do an eco project, that would be great. Like if that was something the group wanted to lean into, like uh, I've heard a lot of uh, support for keeping uh, the printer net going. It's yeah, you established. Do that, it's you do that at home. That's something you do at home. You can't do that on the internet. Can't, you can't do what? You can't go and live in an eco village on the internet. You do that at home where your village is at home. Oh. You can support. You can support it and highlight the, it. You perhaps. do it in the real world, in the yeah, in the bricks and mortar world. No, no. I was saying when when somebody says we all need to do something, I say, well, may, maybe we can have uh, an idea of that's a good way to go. But we we all participate yeah. in different ways. And the big word here I'm trying to bring in is constraints with different constraints. Yeah, so if I'm looking at constraints and other people are trying to lift the constraints, like where are the constraints? Those when are where say, the conversations are. That's where the conversation is. When you say we all need to stop, somebody says we all need to do something, but we all need to stop doing something as well. We stop doing what's pushing us off the cliff. I'd, I'd like to clarify something if I can. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Dave. All, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, my transition to this place, to this space, and to, to, to money free was fought for tooth and nail uh, through, um, you know, homophobia, threats of death, uh, threats of death for thinking in a different way, uh, ostracization, um, you know, removal from just about every religious organization that I tried to to uh, uh, enter into, uh, and the 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 pretty much um, shunning and scapegoating of every single community that I had been in for a, a considerably long amount of time. Uh, the death of my parents and and uh, well, my my dad, my my grandma, 
at, at an early age and being a gay man growing up in a steel working town from a coal mining family when Margaret Thatcher was beating coal miners practically to death to break that, that community spirit when we were you know, smuggling eggs in our underpants and bacon in our underpants to, to communities that had no food because she'd cut the water to them uh, and that had to pick it themselves and, and, and build barriers so the police couldn't get in to take them out. Um, you know, it's not really been the the, the, the wonderful uh, idea of Tinkerbell floating over to Thailand and, and suddenly um, waking up in fairyland. And the monastery is just one aspect that we're trying to connect to create permaculture hubs with cooperatives in the centre, we, we liaise with uh, the, the Crown Princess, we liaise with the government here, we liaise with 10,000 eco-villages through Global Eco-Village Network, we're, we're liaised with another 110,000 uh, beyond that. So, you know, it, 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 the presumption is a very, um, I don't know, I, I, I try to remain humble, but when, when I, this is my trigger, I guess, uh, and this is, this is ego to an extent, and I must admit that, but we, we, we've, we've probably had something like 3,000 uh, individual people that we've, we've taught and helped uh, look at designing eco-villages, designing the structures, designing the fluidity and working uh, spaces of eco-villages. And these can be used uh, in uh, everything from a family to a community setting, a street and this cohesion, if we turn televisions off and walk out into the, the actual real world beyond, uh, allows us the ability to change things directly where we are. And I've done that in every single space that I've been in, from time exchanges to um, planting foodstuffs and planters to uh, rainbow people coming together, which was healers uh, across uh, the UK and, and globe, having pop-up healing sessions, et cetera, et cetera, to Global Eco Village Network, Global Eco Village Network, Ocean Asia, to linking to indigenous people to help uh, save seeds, to the ideas of, of having a, a seed banks in every village in Thailand that could be climate matched to give free seeds to indigenous peoples across the world and also steward those indigenous seeds so we can repack them back to those indigenous peoples so this is not a tin pot uh two-man show this is a, this is a, this is a, this is we work with the mass governments we work with uh militaries we work with uh and and you know i'm not comfortable with that i'm very comfortable with very grounded earthed down to earth uh, people, but you know, if I have to work with Donald Trump, I have to work with Donald Trump. If I have to work with Biden, I have to work with Biden. W whatever comes, I will try to do. And beforehand, I would have been terrified of doing that. But I will tell you one thing: if God or the devil stands between me and uh, uh, an earth that is uh, viable for our children and children's children, I will smote them both to dust or I'll do me bloody best before I die. And if I can come back, I'll come back. I'll do every single thing in my power to change that. I just want to make that completely clear. Um, everything I do on a daily basis from waking up at 1.30 every morning, uh, Skype, um, there, are, there are many of us doing it, thousands of us doing this every day, moving projects forward, trying to catalyze. And to be blatantly honest, uh, I love this space, but also I haven't got time to push anything. You can take or leave what you want. It's entirely up to you. I come back to my, my, my space that I've fought for, uh, of, of peace and joy. And I help other people fight for their space of peace and joy in whichever way they wish to. And I don't judge that. So if it's a, a nudist, gay nudist colony in Costa Rica, then I will help them try and set up systems as long as they're not hurting anybody. If I, I feel it's not for me, I'll just say, look, I'm sorry, guys, this is not mine. Uh, I don't feel comfortable with this, so I'm just going to uh, help another, uh, uh, another space or catalyze another space. I am simply a catalyst. I don't care what you do or where you go or whatever. I have a life that I've fought for and, you know, tooth and nail to get to. And I will help those that are willing to move forward, to, 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 to grow and to, to do what they want or not, that are happy just being. I'll, I'll be there. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just holding space. I'm just a space holder. I don't even exist. You know, I'm just here to enjoy. And if it's not enjoyable, I'll just move away for a little bit, come back and it'll be enjoyable again. You know, um, and you'll see that I'm not tied to anybody. I would say that I'm beyond sovereign. I'm, I'm not owned. I don't have a soul. I'm not sold. 
I guess spirit. that's I guess that's what I was trying to say. Like that's that's a unique thing that you have, and I didn't was wasn't judging you whether it was good or bad, or I wasn't judging you whether it was hard fought for or a flippant decision. What I was saying, it just doesn't. I have to find ways to align, like the number twenty two, or you know, just sharing time, uh, being a person. You know, I can share with you there. Um, you know, so there's ways we can align. Uh, definitely, I cut the TV cord long ago but I'm still hooked into media, but, you know, I choose what I watch, but you know, it's, it's becoming quite a thing. What, what is truth? So there's, I think there's different people with different foundations that yes, we should look at trying to help, especially our fellow members at the GCC. I kind of think that's what we're, that's what I'm think I'm here for. I'm not here to sell or make my thing. You know, I've got, my own career on uh, that I that I have, I'm not retired, so you know um, I, I just can't sit here and and and, and play games. Uh, although there are some games that I would like to play, but ones that are focused on things that uh, make sense to me with my time schedule, interest, and consent. Really, um, uh, it's 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 a terrible thing to mistake a busy man as a bully um, after they've already given you a lot of time. So um, whether they make sense or not, um, you, you can keep your criticism to yourself if they ask it within this group, I would hope. And in fact, the opposite, like to lean over and say, you know, David, I'm trying to not trigger you, but I do appreciate the fact that, um, you know, the way you've chosen to live your life was, uh, is very meaningful and, you know, you, 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 you stake everything behind it. And, you know, that's a valuable message for, for people. Yeah. It is. You know. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's valuable for me too, even though I have a very different lifestyle, I feel that I get a lot of inspiration just hearing David talk about this and that just knowing that this is happening, it, it, it's actually very uplifting uh, psychologically. Uh, just no people are doing this stuff. I mean, it's, it's awesome work. And uh, you, you know, that this is maybe a good place where he can come and tell these stories and we can you know talk about whatever we want to talk about but 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 that's that's a part of the beauty of this garden sometimes people can come in and really tell about these things that they're doing that they might have been fighting for for you know for a long time and um yeah so so you know it's it's not mutual exclusive. It's, it's sort of different people can, you know, feed in to the energy field in different ways. Yeah, I think you, what are you thinking, Colin? Some, some people will um, come into the group and give us a lecture at a time when we needed one. And so that's a blessing. You know, it's like having, having the, uh, the facts laid out on the table. And that's not bullying. It's giving uh, the group. It's giving the group assistance. It's like, it's like focusing. Yeah. Anyone it's like else? showing this is possible. We've done this. You know. I've got to check out. Inspiring. It's, it's past past my sleep time. Bon appetit. Yeah, I got to check out too now too. I think, but. But yeah, I really enjoyed this, and uh, yeah, great to see you, David. And but you know, remember and get some sleep too, because it's important. We have to think about our health, and you know, sleep is important. And uh, just wanted to mention that. So yeah, anyway. yeah, I like to, I like to throw in as well that you know, David felt that he wasn't welcome in a lot of different spiritual places, and I assume he's found something spiritual here, perhaps, in the desire to do better. Um, and you know, that's one of the things that everybody sa says, do your best good. Uh, although I think we have problems in communicating, which is kind of, kind of where I'm, I'm looking at it, what might be able to be done. And I think it's focusing on what's important and a memory. And, and I think Sam's pretty bang on. And I'd like to fight for that word secular again, because in a secular space, David isn't going to be shut down for his beliefs, you know? Uh, he might be asked to explain them or how that applies or not. But if, it, if it's important to you, has anything to do with you, or if it's something that's being suggested for everybody to do, you, you know, you have to kind of lean into what the person is saying. 
Um, Again, it's rule omega. Regardless. If it's an open space, yeah. if we just yeah, have that, that simple mean... attitude, then it works. Yeah. And, and I think I think as well, what works for me now, others may agree or disagree, but you know, you give the person the first time they come to the group, you give them a little more space to unload some stuff. But then, where are those side channels that they can really be helped? And who's going to help them? Or you know, I, I like the idea if you if if you've got something you're trying to build, you know, put it to paper. And that's kind of what I've done. I've built draft prototypes so that I can talk about these things. It's not, get, it's not getting a lot of uh, traction, but you know, I'm 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 consider I'm considering what the, what the use of them actually is in in which which regard. So it's I guess it's something that um, to me is quite obvious. And it doesn't have to be pushed upon people. Sort of like Sam bringing in uh, possibility of using some agile practices. So anyway, uh, I, I'm interested to see where this goes as we, we we tend to focus more and Sam's more willing to be a participant, less interested in being a moderator of nonsense. I shouldn't say that, but I like the fact that Sam participated today. And I think I see him back again, actually. Are you back, Sam? Yeah, so, so yeah, the secular idea is not that being secular means no religion is allowed, being secular in the sense that um, we don't actually honor one religion over another, or any at all for that matter, but the ideas behind them perhaps. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave with that. Anyway. I'm, I'm going to bid everybody a good night. It's, uh, it's 109 here. Uh, and I'm tired and hoarse and uh, need some sleep. Thank you very much for your time, guys. And it was lovely to see you all again. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. I'm going gonna... Yeah. to check out too. I've got my um, daily mask on. <laughs> About right, ready to bye, start bye, my bye, day. Bye, bye, David. I have to say, uh, for the past six months that I've been listening to everybody, um, it's been fascinating hearing everybody's um, fight for, you know, their truth and their visions. Um, you know, I don't say much and I only listen only because sometimes I feel like more than one person is right about the same subject. So um, I'll just leave you with that. Anyway, it's good to see everybody here. And maybe I'll see you tomorrow. It just kind of depends. <laughs> Bye. It's nice to just kick back a little bit because last night I think I got to sleep like around five o'clock maybe and woke up around seven, seven ten, something like that. So I probably was not as calm as I need to be or normally am, hopefully. So anyway, I was just uh, enjoying just sitting back and listening today. Anyway. All right, Barry. Thank Till you, later. Sam. See you okay. later. Bis später. <laughs>